G'day, Parcetos. Welcome to the digital jungle. Thanks for joining on our journey. We are mapping the digital unknown. This is designed for older baby boomers all the way to Gen Z and beyond. This is about digital literacy. I got a 56K modem and a Power Mac in 1994, and I've seen the internet evolve. I've seen the world's population go online. Right now, as of 2021, we have 4.93 billion people online. Who is teaching us how to use this tool as opposed to this tool using us? This is a digital jungle, and we haven't been taught how to cooperate, how to collectively civilize. So in this episode, we're going to begin to map the digital civilization. So my mission in this digital jungle is to help us have a frame of reference to, to navigate this abundance of information, this abundance of connection. In this golden age of digital abundance, the opportunities that you're able to see and the life that you're able to create are only limited by your imagination. So starting in this video, we're going to start collaborating and creating a way that will help us navigate this infinite digital abundance. And I think the best way to do that is map. If you've looked at the past couple of videos that I've released, um, I, I went through how to connect to a very deep intention, how to define and declare your intention before we dive into this civilization because uh, it is a jungle, there are predators, and what they want is your energy. They want your attention. We now have 5 billion people that are collectively imagining this civilization represented uh, in pictures and videos. Um, the way that I think we can begin to understand that is we start the same way that every small town in Colombia starts, and that is with a central plaza. Now, this one is in Ramiriki, which is in Boyacá, just north of Bogotá. If you're not subscribed already, make sure to click like and subscribe. Uh, make sure to share this video with somebody that you think would benefit uh, with some digital literacy, understanding, um, and being able to see opportunities in the digital unknown. So starting with the town plaza, um, something you'll find in Colombia uh, is that every town plaza uh, has church, has the church front and center. And I think that is a very good analogy for your intention, your belief uh, in terms of what you would like to get out of this digital civilization. What do you stand for? What do you represent? What is your belief and what is your intention? My intention is to serve our transition into a cosmic, connected, and conscious civilization this video is just one piece of an overall uh, meta-narrative that I have in my head that I imagine each day that excites me because I want to find out what happens next. Check my previous video if you want to go more into that. Let's add some multi-dimension in here because we're not being guided by north, south, east, west. Uh, we can go up, down, in, out. Uh, the directions you can go online are infinite. The scale is infinite, and that's why starting in the center is so important when we're planning um, for how our uh, civilization is going to expand. So to begin to map the civilization, I'm going to use um, some of the most frequently visited uh, buildings, institutions, uh, whatever, however you want to call it, uh, in this civilization, starting with Facebook, uh, 2.7 billion users. So most of us, are listed in Facebook. Now, when we're imagining the digital civilization, I would consider that as a, uh, as a phone book these days, or at least I use it as a phone book. It has a listing um, of people and businesses uh, in the, the, this digital civilization. Most people are listed on there, whether they use it actively or not. While we're hanging out around the town center, Let's talk LinkedIn, the professional conference center. It's, this, is, this is your centro de convenciones. This is your convention center. Um, this is your business center. This is where you go to network, to hold conferences, to be professional uh, and meet people uh, in various industries. Now, the size of this institution 
depends on how many users it has. It depends on how many people are paying attention to LinkedIn. Recently, we've seen a lot of people paying more attention to LinkedIn uh, and it's grown in size. So let's make that a little bit bigger. I think a very important piece of this puzzle is Twitter. Now, the way I see this being mapped into our digital civilization is as a megaphone. It is a place where you can tweet, tweet. With 240 characters, you can shout something into the, into the digital unknown. I would consider that as standing in the middle of town square and shouting on a soapbox. So let's put Twitter right in there. Now, maybe one person listens to you, maybe 40 million people listen to you. Maybe your Twitter account gets so big that you're able to become the president. Depending on the size of your Twitter, you're going to connect to more people who have Twitter installed in their town plaza. Let's move on to uh, where we are right now, YouTube. Now, YouTube is... Uh, I would consider in the entertainment district. It's not going to be over in the business center. I think it's going to be in the education entertainment district. Let's, let's start building that one out this way. I think over in that direction, I think I've got to add TikTok, uh, an entertainment slash education platform, depending on how you're interacting with it. If you open up this these platforms without intention, without your based beliefs, you're going to be uh, given and fed the content that that algorithm determines uh, will keep you on that platform the most because attention determines the size of that platform in this digital environment. Things can, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, TikTok was not very well known. Now it is one of the most, I believe it's number one most downloaded uh, application in the application store. Instagram. Bit of a bit of an institution. Uh, now I would put this out here. I would put this in the entertainment district. I see Instagram as a social bar, a social lounge uh, where you can go and dress up and maybe talk business, but it's usually where you hang out with friends. You might meet some new people. Now this is not going to be a hundred percent accurate representation of anyone's. Um, digital civilization. This is going to be, I think, a hybrid mix of my own uh, perspective um, combined with what I am uh, seeing as the most popular and the most um, worldwide or the most uh, collective idea of how, uh, how we're using these platforms uh, combined with you guys. I want you guys to participate in the creation of this analogy to understand, map, uh, learn, and even profit from this digital civilization that we are uh, witnessing unfold as we collectively pay attention to different platforms. Now, the sizes of these, these platforms are determined by our attention. Look at all of these platforms and look at how uh, the key metric, MAU, monthly active users is the key metric in terms of how they're valuing these these companies. So when when I say our collective attention is creating the future of our civilization, where we pay attention in this digital environment is creating immense amount of value. It's because the more time we spend on these platforms, the more advertising and therefore revenue they can generate. This is super key to understand because right now we're using what many are referring to as Web 2.0. And Web 3.0 is knocking on the door. It is blockchain based. And what it is going to allow us to do is to realize that our attention is creating these institutions. And we have to become aware that we are essentially energy. Our attention is focused energy in this civilization and how this interacts with the civilization, this digital civilization that we're creating in our minds is extremely important. Wikipedia, I think, is replacing what would be uh, kind of like the library. In a small town, you might go to the library to find information. I, I, I glimpsed into that world in grade, grade four uh, before I got my uh, computer. I went to the library and looked up a book uh, for information. 
uh, and then Ask Jeeves and Alta Vista came along, uh, even uh, you know on the old Netscape Navigator. A couple of things we haven't addressed. Email and WhatsApp. Now, these are some of the most used platforms. Email, I think, has 4 billion users. Um, so about ha half the world has an email account. Email for me is like, it's, it's right in there. It is right next to, it's right outside my front door. It is uh, next to wherever I'm living. So email is like saying, hey, what's going on? What's, uh, you know, checking in with old friends, sending communications to all over the world uh, to people that I may be connected to. If you're not on my newsletter, make sure to get on newsletter.sammiller.life. I'm curating investment opportunities that generate cash flow and enable a global lifestyle. What's up? to me is it's even more intimate than uh than email because it's it's very uh very close uh you know the you know it's very active for day to day day to day living these days uh what's up is super close it's almost like having inviting people into your living room you know like those uh like having a group football chat is essentially like having a group um a group of mates over in your living room you're having a chat usually the conversations are more private uh more intimate i think that's what we're seeing in the in the future of this uh of this civilization our energy our attention is what is essentially giving life to the size and the uh, the location, the proximity of all of these institutions. Um, there's going to be various ways we can unfold this analogy. Um, one of the most interesting ones that I'm sure everyone here is uh, very interested in is where's the bank? Where do we where do we keep our money? Who who's generating interest? What what currency are we using? to exchange energy in this digital civilization. If attention is essentially inflating all of these, is there any way to track, to measure how much attention we give to a certain location? We can be in multiple places at once. In one day, we might spend an hour on Instagram, two hours on Facebook, three hours on LinkedIn messaging people. We might be doing business. We might be just hanging out, connecting to friends. However much time we spend collectively in these places is essentially creating um, these, uh, these platforms, which can have very real-world consequences. So let's go back to energy and that energy being our attention. If everybody online right now stopped paying attention uh, to Facebook or TikTok, they would disappear from our collectively imagined uh, civilization. Depending on how we start prioritizing our time online will it depend on how um, this civilization unfolds. As we understand that our attention is essentially the electricity, as we shift into Web 3.0, we're now able to measure and track and quantify how much attention we spend in each place using the blockchain and using various tokens that can measure and track that for us. Now, that is going to be a commodity and that is what is called data. Okay, so now we've got something to represent data, a stockpile of valuable uh, resource that is being uh, put here. I mean, businesses just wanna pay uh, incredible amounts of money for this kind of data. Now we have technology that can allow us to track and measure uh, that data for ourselves. Perhaps there's going to be a way to monetize our own data. Um, obviously, we want to know who has that data and who's using it. At this point in Web 2.0, uh, we've given it to a lot of these platforms uh, that I think we've started using unintentionally. We have... Uh, you know, we're, we're part of a generation of people that have had this technology integrate into our lives without the chance of us kind of see, uh, seeing and understanding its full potential before we decide how to integrate with it. And I believe that's what this, these, this series is, is about, is about taking a step back, remapping from first principles of, of what's actually happening here, where are the opportunities, where's the value. 
as we see the flaws in a fiat currency in our current environment, we're going to be shifting our belief to value in the digital. And the question is, how and what? And I've got some ideas where uh, we can we can start sifting through that. That's going to be an adventure into the financial district. I think the data. So data, I think, is also over here in the financial district. Uh, that's going to certainly be a, a, a area of adventure as we go forward in this series as various places unfold. Uh, for example, gaming and art. These are two uh, areas of this digital civilization that are experiencing dramatic change. In gaming, we're seeing play to earn. Using NFT technology, non-fungible tokens, uh, people are now able to play games at a level we've never seen before. We should actually even put uh, gaming closer to the financial district because this is one of the big booming industries. Same with the art. We are creating digital art uh, that is uh, identifiably unique. And one of the most important things to understand in this digital environment is that businesses, uh, entire blockchains can be copy and pasted. So you might have a, a great piece of software delivering a service. Um, in the digital, uh, there's always a way to copy and paste uh, an entire program. So your entire business uh, can be copy and pasted. This is going to make a very competitive uh, environment. Um, and the value is really going to be in about the, the loyalty and the size of the network um, that you uh, develop a relationship with. Now, art, and, and, and in particular, NFT art, cannot be copy and pasted. There's only one of a kind. There'll only ever be uh, a certain amount of crypto punks that are um, being designed in that way. So there's scarcity. And when we believe there's, uh, and when we believe something together has value and is also scarce, the value of that thing increases. And that's why I think digital art is something that we cannot ignore in our adventures going forward. So gaming, finance, art, We've got social media platforms where we connect and build community. This is going to be a wild ride. Make sure to click like and subscribe. So I think we've done enough for today in terms of starting to re-understand the digital environment that we're all connecting to each other in as we go from a digital town to a digital civilization. This map is going to be malleable. I'm going to bring you guys along on adventures into various sectors here. I also want to empower fellow entrepreneurs to be able to see the opportunity that we have. I want to provide digital and financial literacy. So I'm going to be tracking down digital assets that generate cash flow to liberate our lifestyles. And I'll be sharing specifically those cash flow opportunities in my newsletter. Make sure to get on that. You can check it out in my digital dry bag, sammiller.life. All right, so until the next video, let me know in the comments below where you'd like to explore first. I think uh, I'm, I'm deciding between gaming, especially the play to earn opportunities, banking, uh, DeFi, cryptocurrencies. That's a huge realm that's going to expand in that part of town, as well as art. Creativity, I think, is something that I'd really enjoy going into. So where do we go first? To the gaming arcade, to the bank, or to the museum? Let me know in the comments below. Until the next video, I invite you to embrace your fears because they are literally blinding uh, an opportunity that may uh, be there once you integrate, embrace, and dissolve that fear. You may see all types of dreams that you may have never dreamed before. And I invite you uh, to come along and embrace the unknown with me. I'll see you in the next video.